So if you've been around the fitness industry for any length of time, whether you're in it or you're just learning about it, learning about um, training and that sort of thing, you've probably heard the old, um, you know, the, the idea that there's a certain window of opportunity at the end of your workout, after, after your workout, that you have to eat something in it uh, in order to get the effects of your workout or else you just wasted your workout. I've literally heard people say that sort of thing or that you lose muscle if you don't eat or consume something within this um, this timing window, this nutrient timing window. So the thing is, is this actually true? Is this actually uh, what the research says and, and what, you know, is there anything to really back up these claims? Or is this just a cleverly devised way to sell you more protein shakes? In today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down all the actual research and see if this is true. Hint, it's not. All right, so what's the claim? The claim here that uh, the myth basically is that you have only a specific window uh, to eat in and people call it different things. They call it the metabolic window, the anabolic window, that sort of thing uh, that they say, you know, all the bodybuilding magazines, et cetera, have been saying this. It's kind of conventional wisdom um, in, the, in the community that uh, you, you have to eat within a certain period of time or else you're gonna um, inhibit your muscle protein synthesis. You're gonna lose your gains or whatever. Uh, the funny thing is, is that conventional wisdom is actually not wisdom at all. So when you operate based on assumptions, that's what followers do. And leaders actually find the facts. What we're going to do today is we're going to find the facts. So um, the current strategy, essentially, based on these assumptions, what we've, hear, what we've heard, all the hearsay here, is that the ingestion of quick digestive uh, protein and carbohydrates within 30 to 45 minutes post-workout uh, actually helps with certain things uh, with body composition, performance, and recovery. Let's see if this is real. So this study right here actually shows that the sensitizing effect of training, of exercise, actually lasts for at least 24 hours post-exercise. So uh, that seems to turn that 30 to 45 minute idea on its face pretty fast. So this study shows right here that there's no difference in glucose and insulin between groups who are fed zero to four hours post-exercise or two to six hours post-exercise. So even varying you know, over the course of a few hours, it didn't really make any difference. As long as sufficient carbs are ingested, there's no difference in either group during recovery. The study shows right here that two hours post-exercise without caloric intake, there was actually still a very significant replacement of glycogen storage in the muscles. This review of the literature from Biomed Central actually shows that there is evidence suggesting that anything within three to six hours of post-workout activity will still allow for that anabolic recovery. They also claim that most evidence to support the post-workout anabolism theory is just hypothetical and actually has no claims or roots in real evidence. This study goes to support that muscle protein synthesis doesn't even increase until 195 minutes after exercise. There's some really interesting things I'm going to get into in this video, uh, really just showing you that what you think you know about how this works is actually uh, almost a completely opposite of the way it does. It's pretty cool, actually. So this study showed that the consumption of whey plus leucine during a workout had no effect on strength, muscle endurance, or body composition. This study done on older individuals showed that a higher dietary protein intake had no difference on body composition, skeletal muscle fiber size, in response to resistance training. 
In this study, they saw that men who consumed adequate amount of protein in their diet had no benefit in muscle mass or strength when consuming protein before or after exercise. So this would go back to kind of that 24 hour window. As long as you're eating the adequate amount of the macronutrients within that day, uh, it has actually no effect on any of these parameters, um, positive or negative. In this study, the subjects were actually given um, co-ingestion co of protein and carbohydrates during a six hour post-workout window. And they showed no difference uh, between that and carb supplementation as long as adequate protein was consumed. Now this shows that protein supplementation has no advantageous effect on positive adaptations of exercise when consumed before or after exercise. These are all kind of reiterating that first study that I showed. Uh, this study showed that, that in untrained males there was actually no benefit in consuming post-exercise protein supplementation. This showed that post-exercise protein supplementation had no effect on muscle size and strength and maintenance during a two-week period of detraining. Uh, this shows that there's an increase in fat-free mass with protein supplementation in older adults, but has no effect on muscle strength or size. And um, this 10-week study actually showed that protein timing in athletes had no added benefit to strength, power, or body composition parameters. This showed that there is no benefit to um, anabolic response to ingestion of uh, timed intake uh, intake of protein. So again, the anabolic window is just like being blown apart. This the stuff is just a total myth. It doesn't doesn't there's no evidence to back it up. All the evidence says the opposite, pretty much. This study showed that obese individuals um, basically had no benefit from protein timing in a calorically restrictive diet with res resistance training. And this study showed anabolic hormones increased from exercise, um, but did not increase um, the protein synthesis within the cell. All right, so, so here's something that's really interesting is that, that what we think, uh, you know, like you have to shuttle all these nutrients into your body in order for your body to recover, otherwise it won't recover. It's actually the opposite of what's true and shown in the research. And I'm gonna show you this right here. It's, it's interest. this is really interesting, is that if you don't eat post-workout, it's actually more advantageous than if you do because what it does is it allows your body to go into and allow for the proper use stress um, infl inflammatory response. It's actually like a productive inflammatory response in the muscles that trigger anabolic hormone release to repair the muscles and upregulate certain hormones. I actually write a bit about this in the Thor program book and how it works to increase natural um, anabolic hormone production, but I'm gonna break down a lot of this research here right now because it, it kind of flips what we think we know on, on, on its head. So it's, it's pretty cool actually. Um, waiting to consume any type of nutrition for a couple hours post-exercise is going to actually allow the body to go through this positive inflammatory response and allow the body to properly recover and therefore create more room for positive adaptations. This eustress recovery cycle is essential for facilitating these positive training ad adaptations and hormonal balance. Now this article actually showed that the consumption of antioxidants um, after exercise inhibited the recovery of the muscle. I mean, like what, like what the hell it's, it's, that's exactly what you would not think. Like you wouldn't think that eating antioxidants would actually inhibit muscle recovery right in that post-workout time period. So this study states that there might be a positive oxidative response or inflammatory response essentially to exercise in that antioxidants actually shut that positive response down. I mean, this is, this is crazy stuff. The study showed that there was no difference in inflammation markers of antioxidant con consumption. And then this one goes in depth, in depth on um, vitamin C inhibiting recovery of muscle function. Again, not something you would think. It states that there is a need for reactive oxygen species, or ROS as a lot of the literature actually calls it, um, post-exercise to induce proper recovery. So post-exercise, it's almost looking like you should wait you know, a couple hours before you even consume anything after your training. So this talks about the rea reactive oxygen species, the ROS, from exercise having a uh, signaling effect for certain recovery pathways to um, you know, start to, to fall into place. So this study shows that the antioxidant consumption actually does reduce the exercise-induced ox oxidative stress. Uh, however, you know, at, at, at face value, that sounds like a positive thing, but like I said, like I mentioned before in these couple other studies, there's actually that oxidative stress is positive when it's in a eustress environment like this. Like when you're actively training your body to try and become stronger, you need to allow for it to actually, um, you know, start to facilitate this productive signaling pathway 
uh, before you consume these antioxidants or some type of post-workout nutrition. Actually, the research shows that this is the way to go. Uh, this shows that with the concept of uh, mitohormesis, antioxidant consumption inhibits the positive health benefits of exercise. Now here we go into a bit of detail. We see that the um, reactive oxygen species are actually potentially good in this case and necessary for repair and antioxidant activity reduces the positive ROS activity. This one shows that there is no, there is a need for the hermetic response of oxidative stress from exercise. Uh, this shows that exercise has an antioxidant effect itself. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, this states that the possibility of antioxidants actually um, hinder the positive adaptations of exercise. So it, we see like this pattern, this, this happens over and over and over. All these studies are confirming that the exercise adaptations need a bit of a, a reactive oxygen species uh, response, an inflammatory response, and it's a positive thing if you can recover properly from it. If you have the right nutrients within that 24-hour window regularly, every day, your body's going to have what it needs to recover, and it doesn't need to worry about post-workout nutrition. So this states that the ROS are actually messenger molecules that trigger these positive adaptations of exercise. Again, another one here states that ROS from exercise serve as messenger molecules for adaptive pathways to occur properly, and by preventing their production or by consuming post-workout nutrition or antioxidants right after your workout, you actually reduce these positive responses. So this study right here shows that low level of these signaling molecules decrease defense against disease and other positive gene expressions. And um, this one might want, I'll, I'm gonna do another video on, uh, on whey protein because there's a lot of myths around whey protein. And here's one of them. Um, this study showed that immediate consumption of whey, pro, whey protein post-workout actually reduced fat burning, reduced fat oxidation in the body. So if you're trying to lose fat, you probably don't wanna be consuming whey right after your workout. Um, so there you have it. That is the anabolic window myth uh, just busted completely. The, the literature really literally says the opposite of what we've been told, which is kind of crazy. Um, you know, so, but I think it's important to think about like um, how many other things in your life are like this, that you just had these assumptions that, that were real because of hearsay and an echo chamber online, and these blogs and all this stuff. Think about it. There are a lot of things out there that um, you haven't fully explored yet. And what I plan on doing on this channel is really helping to fully explore these things and tr to find the truth, to identify what's true and what's false. So um, if you want to actually identify what's true and false in terms of uh, a diet, I actually made a quiz that is called the Thermo Diet Quiz. So it's the thermodiet.com slash quiz. And I help identify within a certain framework how your body um, should function properly. So uh, we'll identify which organ system you need to optimize properly. So there are three things that, three organ systems that are main, uh, the, the main drivers of either health or dishealth in the body. And um, most people have these out of whack. So I'm going to try and help you uh, by answering just a couple questions. You can give me some information about it. And I'll put you on a path to restore your health, restore your energy, and uh, do so by identifying whether you're a liver body type, a thyroid body type, or a pituitary body type. And by looking at that, I can know exactly what path to put you on and we'll put, get you down that, that road so you're going to be feeling lean, strong, tons of energy in the gym, and just throughout your day at the office or wherever you work. Um, tons of energy in the in the bedroom um, and no performance problems or libido issues in that sense and because what you're going to be doing is correcting micronutrient deficiencies and restoring your hormonal balance which is extremely important and it's important for for every level of health in your body so go over to the the thermodiet.com slash quiz answer a couple questions and i'll see you over there thanks for watching and uh, subscribe to my channel if you like it this compound is a very powerful anti-nutrient and a powerful um, mineral accumulator. So what it does is it strips your body of essential minerals that you need to function properly.